Hello. For tonight's grisly tale, I'm going to read you a story from more grisly tales for gruesome kids. These are cautionary tales that I wrote for lovers of Squeam. Tonight's story is called... Spoil Sport. It stood out like a sore thumb. It was a grubby little house on a pretty little street and was lived in by the meanest family in Britain. They were called the Pinch Guts. Ma and Pa were even too mean to give their children names, so they called them Girl and Baby. Baby was only six and still had a lot to learn about being mean, but Girl was ten and she was already as mean as her parents. Their house was a disgrace. Ma and Pa had not spent a penny on it since they moved in, and that was twenty years ago. The roof leaked, the cellar flooded, the windows were so black with dirt that curtains were not required. When their landlord told them to decorate the house or get out, they used custard to save on paint and the tail end of a squirrel to save on a paintbrush. When they needed running water, they stuck a hose pipe up their neighbour's plug hole and stole his bath water. They burnt the furniture for firewood, stripped the wallpaper for loo paper, and used Nan's false teeth as rat traps. As for food, the pinch guts did not believe in buying food when they could eat like kings from their own garden. Snail stew was a favourite, as were grass pizza, fox chops, worm bolognese, nettle meringue pie, toad in the hole, because a hole costs nothing, and the family favourite, magpie moose. Pa Pinchcut had made a trap for catching birds. He smeared super glue on top of the nut dispenser. Now just how mean is that? Growing up surrounded by such meanness, it was little wonder that girl was such a mean-spirited spoil sport. She couldn't bear it if people were enjoying themselves. She had to wreck the fun. At parties, she would shout at the magician, I saw you put that card up your sleeve. Or if there was a ventriloquist, she'd jump up and stick a bulldog clip on his lips. OK, Mr Clip Lips, now let's see your dummy talk. At birthdays, she adored telling Baby what her present was before he'd opened it. It's a ball tyre for a 1975 Ford Cortina. The baby stopped tearing the wrapping paper and started to cry. Oh, boo-hoo, he whined. That's a horrible present. I don't want a tyre. No, but I do, said Pa. That's why I bought it. Give it here. Why do you want a tyre if we don't have a car, salt baby? Well, I'm saving for one, aren't I? grinned Pa. At the moment I've only got one bald tyre, but when I get the rest of the parts I can build my own. At Christmas, Girl loved ruining the magic. Before she took Baby to see Father Christmas in his grotto, she wound him up for hours saying things like, Which lucky boy is going to meet Father Christmas and get loads and loads of presents then? But when they were in the queue and Baby was next up on the knee and was so excited he was nearly wetting himself, she casually said, Of course, that's not Father Christmas, you know. That's Mr Collywobble from the Ironmongers. And then, when Baby's bottom lip started to quiver, she added, If you don't believe me, tread on his toe. He dropped a hammer on it last week. So Baby trod on Father Christmas' toe, and Father Christmas yelled, Yow! from where the hammer had bruised him. And because it was so funny seeing Father Christmas swearing and all the little children crying, Girl carried on. Go on, tuck his beard, it's <laughs> false. Yow! howled Father Christmas as the elastic snapped into his chin and Girl went for broke. And punch the elf, it's not real. But the elf was real and punched Baby back which meant the baby cried all through Christmas. But the meanest thing the girl ever did was to tell her nan that she had a surprise party the following week to celebrate her 98th birthday. But it's not a surprise anymore, groaned her disappointed grandmother. Whoops, girl smirked. 
Sorry, I thought you should know who's coming. Why? asked Nan. Because nobody is. We invited a hundred people, but they all said no. None of them can stand you. Oh, oh stop, gasped the frail old lady, or you'll break my heart. Yeah, about time, said Girl. We were rather hoping that might happen soon. You have made out your will, haven't you? Would it surprise you to know that Girl Pinchgut had no friends? Then one night, Baby lost a tooth. He was eating supper, newt nuggets and mashed marigolds, when his tooth fell out on the table. Oh, super! he whistled as his tongue poked through the hole. That means I'll get money from the tooth fairy! Ha! Huh, snorted Girl. What planet were you born on, Mr Gullible? Fairies don't exist. They do? How could wishes come true if they didn't? Well, it's all done with mirrors, she said snottily. The Tooth Fairy can't leave money under my pillow with mirrors, reposted Baby. No, sniggered Girl, because the Tooth Fairy doesn't leave it at all. But Baby refused to believe her, and when he came downstairs the following morning with a fifty pence piece in his hand, Girl was taken aback. See, said Baby, the Tooth Fairy did come. She left me fifty pence. Oh, grow up, snarled Girl. She doesn't exist. That's Ma and Pa, that is. They put that money under your pillow. Ma and Pa looked surprised. No, we didn't, Ma said. Pa and I never give you money. It's ours. Why would we give it to you when we could spend it on ourselves first? They're just saying that to stop you from crying, said Girl nastily. Don't listen to anything they say, baby. Your childhood stops here. The Tooth Fairy's dead. At that precise moment, in an insubstantial reality beyond the bounds of reason, the Tooth Fairy was pouring cauldrons of boiling fluoride toothpaste over the battlements of her tooth castle to stop hordes of bacteria from swarming up the walls to destroy her. Bombs away! she yelled. Isn't it super fun? Her castle was made from teeth. From all of the teeth. From all of the mouths. From all of the children. From all over the world. But years of attacks from the barbarian bacteria had left the castle weak and riddled with decay. The teeth were rotting. They were as fragile as paper bricks. It was only a matter of time before the bacteria battered down her castle walls, stepped through the holes and helped themselves to her crown. If the Tooth Fairy was not to be overrun by the enemy, she needed to rebuild her castle with good, solid teeth. Because good, solid teeth were hard to find. Because good, solid teeth did not fall out. Good, solid teeth were the ones in the gums. I have an idea, said the gum goblin, who was head of intelligence at the Tooth Fairy's HQ. If a tooth fell out in Guatemala, he heard it first. Do you remember that small boy you visited last night? A baby? trilled the flighty young Tooth Fairy, who was easily distracted and relied on her advisers to keep her pointing in the right direction. Well, yes, replied the gum goblin, striding over to a tape recorder on his desk. I recorded this conversation not thirty seconds ago. He pressed a button on the recorder, and Girl's voice came over loud and clear. Oh, grow up. She doesn't exist. That's Ma and Pa, that is. They put that money under your pillow. Your childhood stops here. The Tooth Fairy's dead. Oof, that really gets my goat, puffed the tongue toad. A judicious toad with a handsomely long tongue that whispered words of wisdom in the Tooth Fairy's ear. I can't stand it when children don't believe. Oh, what do you think we should do? The Tooth Fairy's face was full of excitement. We could turn Girl's hair into a puffball and blow it to the four winds. Or maybe I should dance her ragged. Oh, why don't I dance more often, dear Gummy? I do so love a gavotte or a cha-cha-cha. Well, we should teach her a lesson, declared the tongue toad, 
and at the same time solve the tooth decay problem. The gum goblin gasped. Are you suggesting what I think you're suggesting? Why, yes, said the toad. I think I am. Well, isn't anyone going to tell me, squealed the tooth fairy. Why am I always the last to know anything around here? The tongue toad smiled broadly. I'm intrigued, he said. Does the word pliers mean anything to you? When Girl climbed into bed later that night, Baby was still crying downstairs. He'd been crying all day. It has come as a big shock to find that the Tooth Fairy did not exist. Girl heard the back door open and close, and from the silence she could tell that Ma and Pa had shut Baby out for the night, in the kennel in the garden. How much more peaceful life was without Baby. Her head touched her pillow, her mouth dropped open slightly and she fell asleep. She was woken by the throbbing in her lip. She couldn't see what was going on, but it felt like someone had just punched her in the mouth. She tried to speak, but her jaws wouldn't shut. She sat bolt upright. Oh, watch out, came a scream from inside her mouth. Make a sudden move like that again, and I'll have your tonsils out by mistake. Girl turned her head sideways and looked in the mirror. There was a metal clamp wedged into her mouth, holding her jaws open. Her chin was covered in blood, and inside her mouth she could see two coral pink wings, which shimmered when they caught the light. Uh, whoever you are, she mumbled, get out of my mouth! Ow! There was that stabbing pain again, like a cocktail stick jabbed into a gum. It was giving her a headache. Not long now, shouted the voice inside girl's mouth. Only another sixteen to go. And as the shrill little voice piped up in the dark, a white tooth flew out of girl's mouth and landed on the eider down. Oi, she shouted as best she could. That's my tooth. Yes, I know, said the tooth fairy, fluttering briefly onto the girl's bottom lip and skipping up to the end of her nose. I I'm taking the lot, if you don't mind to refurbish the castle. Uh, sorry about the fat lip, by the way. I had to kick it open. You're the tooth fairy, gasped girl. And you're a naughty girl for not believing in me, smiled the fairy. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'd better get started on those big molars. She put away the pliers and produced a tiny pneumatic drill from behind her back. I think they might prove a little tricky at which girl passed clean out, and the Tooth Fairy jumped back into the gaping black hole to complete her night's work. The next morning, girl was toothless. But when she showed Ma and Pa, they just laughed. And when she asked if they'd buy her some dentures, they laughed even louder. Girl was furious. I'll get even with that wicked Tooth Fairy if it's the last thing I do she muttered to herself. Oh, so the Tooth Fairy does exist, yelped Baby, jumping up outside the window like a dog, which gave Girl an idea. She ran down to the butcher's and bought a bone. Then she ran along to the builder's yard and dipped the bone in concrete. Then she ran to the local park and threw the bone to an old dog with grey ears. Well, no dog can resist the bone and this dog was no exception. When it took its first bite, there was a terrible crack, a pained yelp, and Girl pounced with a cunning glint in her eye. As Girl slipped the dog's tooth under her pillow, the gum goblin felt a twitch in his ear. Tooth at the pinch guts, he said, under Girl's pillow. Well, I, I thought we'd removed all her teeth last night, said the tongue toad. You do your job and I'll do mine, said the gum goblin tersely. I heard a tooth, that's all there is to it. But, but, but what if it's a trap? Well, how can a tooth be a trap? A mouth is a trap, a tooth is a tooth. It's all right, but don't say I didn't warn you. Well, I never said that. Did I say that? But the argument had long since become irrelevant because the tooth fairy had already left for girl's house. Over the newly white tooth castle wall she flew, over the field of deadly bacteria hiding in their filthy trenches, until she came to Girl's house, to the window that was normally closed, 
but on this particular occasion was conveniently open. The tongue toad was right. It was a trap. As the tooth fairy rummaged under girl's pillow, girl snapped open her eyes and caught her like a butterfly. Gotcha, she said. Now, here's what I want you to do. Oh, let me go, screamed the coral pink fairy. You're wrinkling my wings. But girl wasn't letting go until the fairy had met her demands. Take me home to your castle and give me back my teeth, she whistled, picking up a slipper, or I'll squash you with this and ruin toothless nights for children all over the world. But you don't understand, the fairy trembled. Your teeth are the only good teeth I've got. I, I use them to rebuild my castle wall. If, if I give them back, my castle will be devoured by bacteria. Oh dear, smiled girl heartlessly. She squeezed harder. Looks like you can't win either way. The Tooth Fairy did not like the look of that slipper. She took Girl's hand and flew her back to her castle, where the Gum Goblin and Tongue Toad were waiting to greet her. You will fetch my good strong teeth now, Girl ordered. Well, only if you promise not to be such a spoil sport in future, replied the Gum Goblin. No deals, roared Girl, raising her slipper. One false move and the Tooth Fairy gets it. So you admit that the Tooth Fairy does exist? Teeth! bellowed Girl. While you, she said, pointing to the Tongue Toad, will stand by to hop me home the moment I'm fully toothed up again. Well, I really must protest, interrupted the Tongue Toad. This is not a good idea. The, the wall was built to keep the evil bacteria out. If we pull it down, we'll be ransacked. But his protest came too late, because just then the gum goblin arrived with a sack that was full of girls' good strong teeth that he pulled from the castle wall. He presented them to her and held up a mirror while she popped them back in. But the moment she had, she wished she hadn't. She had just climbed aboard the toad when a fearful slurping shook the castle to its roots. The enamel wall was breached. The bacteria swarmed into the castle and slimed over the bridge into the crown chamber. What do you want? asked the Tooth Fairy with dignity. A teeth, grunted their leader, a brute of an organism called Bacillus Maximus. We eat good teeth. Give us one mouthful of good teeth and we'll go away. But the Gum Goblin didn't have any. The Tongue Toad didn't have any, and the Tooth Fairy had lost hers years before in a fight over a hand of poker, which just left Girl. Before she could close her mouth, Bacillus Maximus spotted the telltale white gleam, and with a loud blast of his whistle, he waved his troops forward. Girl realised that she was in a spot of bother and tried to pull her teeth out again, but they were stuck fast. She tried to run, but a legion of germs blocked her way. Like a swarm of black flies, they overwhelmed her. She tried to scream, but her teeth had turned to goo in her mouth. And in less than a minute, the bacteria had gone. And girl was just a puddle of smelly brown sludge. Which meant that the pinch guts were able to bury her in a cheap fizzy pop bottle instead of an expensive brass-handled coffin. And that, as Ma and Pa told Baby, was something of a result. And when Baby lost his next tooth, he pretended to be asleep until the tooth fairy was actually underneath his pillow, dragging the tooth out. When she re-emerged, he had his eyes open. Hello, he grinned excitedly. I knew Girl was wrong. The Tooth Fairy heaved the tooth into the rucksack on her back and prepared for takeoff. I knew you existed. Well, I knew I existed too, she winked. Then she fluttered out into the night sky and headed for home, with Baby's voice booming behind her. Give my love to Father Christmas, the Easter Bunny, the Baby Stork, the Little Leprechauns, 
and the Yeti. So she did. <laughs>